Hi there, I'm Tom from Danfoss Climate Solutions. Now watch this video if you wish a correct valve service with minimum service costs and wish to ensure a safe and reliable valve operation. In this video we will show you how to isolate the valve from the refrigeration system and disconnect the electrical supply, how to remove and replace the actuator if needed, how to remove and replace the valve body o-ring and how to reconnect the valve to the electrical supply and to the refrigeration system. We recommend to use a T30 screwdriver as seen here for the actuator screws. If needed you can use the Danfoss ASTG service driver seen here to manually operate the actuator and check the function of it. This service driver has code number 034G0013 and is available on Danfoss product store. So let's get started with the valve service. If the valve to service is located in the pressurized refrigeration system, then the first step is to depressurize and evacuate the refrigerant in the area where the valve is located and then isolate the valve from the system. This is typically done by closing the isolation valves on both sides of the valve, as seen here in this principal example. The next important step is to carefully remove the electrical supply from the valve actuator, as seen here. Now a very important next step here is to ensure that the valve is fully open before the actuator is removed. And why is this so important? Well, when the valve is closed, then the actuator cone is pressed against the valve body seat to seal off refrigerant flow. This cone seat pressure causes the actuator top to put pressure on the actuator screws and can make it difficult to untighten the screws and remove the actuator. So ensure that the valve is fully open before removing the actuator. This can manually be done by using the ASTG service driver seen here. Follow the ASTG instructions in the separate manual to operate it correctly. Connect the service driver cable to the valve actuator cable connector socket as seen here. The four lights on the service driver seen here are activated if the valve is correctly connected to the service driver. Then manually open the valve by pushing the activate toggle towards open as seen here. The valve is now open. After opening the valve, then carefully remove the service driver cable from the actuator as seen here. We are now ready to remove the actuator from the valve body. Please note that in this video we demonstrate the valve service procedure with the valve located on a workbench as seen here. But the service procedure is the same for the valve located in the refrigeration system. Remove the actuator screws as seen here. And then carefully remove the actuator as seen here. Now a very good tip here is to ensure that the actuator is stored safely where it will not get dirty or scratched until reusing it for reassembly of the valve. So ensure to protect the actuator cone and the o-ring area on the actuator as specified here. Then carefully remove the o-ring from the valve body as seen here. Now what's out here? If removing the o-ring with a tool, do not scratch the o-ring groove since this might cause risk of external refrigerant leakage once the valve is reassembled and back in operation. So if necessary, use a soft tool for o-ring removal, like for example a piece of carton, as seen here in this example. Now a very important thing here is always to scrap the old o-ring and use a new o-ring instead for valve reassembly. And why is this so important? Well, the o-ring is sealing between valve body and actuator by compression, and especially if the valve is used at higher refrigerant temperatures, then the o-ring elasticity might get less over time, and if reused during valve service, there might be a risk of less o-ring sealing capability and risk of external refrigerant leakage. So scrap the old o-ring and use a new one instead. To carefully clean the valve body seat area and o-ring groove before reassembly of the valve, as seen here. This is to avoid possible dirt, causing future risk of internal or external refrigerant leakage once the valve is reassembled and back in operation. Okay, we are now ready to reassemble the valve. 
The first step is to carefully mount the new O-ring into the O-ring groove in the valve body, as seen here. Then the next step is to mount the actuator onto the valve body, or, if needed, first we replace the old actuator with a new one. When mounting the actuator, or if replacing the old actuator with a new one, it is very important to ensure that the correct actuator type is used as replacement. This can be a linear type or a S-curve type actuator identified on the actuator cone shape as seen here. Ensure that the actuator is fully open, for example done by using the Danfoss ASTG service driver as mentioned earlier. Ensure that the actuator cone and O-ring area are clean from dirt, as also mentioned earlier. And ensure that the actuator is positioned correctly onto the valve body. As just mentioned, it is very important to ensure that the actuator is fully open before it is mounted onto the valve body. And why is this so important? Well, if the actuator is closed, then the actuator cone will press against the valve body seat when the actuator is mounted onto the valve body. This cone seat pressure causes the actuator top to put pressure on the actuator screws and can make it difficult to tighten the screws correctly to ensure tight o-ring sealing between valve body and actuator. Therefore, there is a risk of external refrigerant leakage once the valve is reassembled and back in operation. So ensure that the actuator is fully open before mounting it as mentioned earlier during valve disassembly, the valve can manually be opened by using the ASTG service driver seen here. As also mentioned, follow the ASTG instructions in the separate manual to operate it correctly. Then mount the actuator onto the valve body as seen here. Ensure that the actuator piston guide enters the grooves in the valve body as seen here and ensure that the actuator is positioned so that the two arrows on the actuator and valve body are aligned, as seen here. This ensures that the actuator piston operates correctly inside the valve body without risk of rotating, and it ensures that the electrical cable can be remounted on the actuator without getting twisted. Torque tighten the actuator screws correctly, as seen here. Mount the cable correctly, as seen here and be careful not to damage the connector socket during cable mounting, as seen here in this example. If the connector socket is damaged, then you need to replace the complete actuator. You have now completed a safe and efficient valve service and can reconnect the valve to the refrigeration system. This is done by opening the isolation valves on both sides of the valve and recharging and pressurizing the system, as seen here in this principal example. So to summarize the lessons learned from this video, you now know how to isolate the valve from the refrigeration system and disconnect the electrical supply, how to remove and replace the actuator if needed, how to remove and replace the valve body o-ring, and how to reconnect the valve to the electrical supply and to the refrigeration system. All this ensuring your correct valve service with minimum service costs and a safe and reliable valve operation. Have a look at the other Danfoss online videos where I talk about valves. Thanks for watching.